everyone, Hannah here. I'm a designer animator, and today I'm not just gonna be playing around in Photoshop, I'm actually going to be messing around with user experience design in XD as well. So I'm gonna show you how to take the basics of Photoshop and bring your work into XD so that you can prototype websites, mobile apps, all sorts of user experience. Let's get into it. All right, so Adobe rolled out XD, which is this awesome program about fall of last year, October, and basically what it lets you do is really quickly prototype different projects for user experience. The really cool thing that Adobe's offering right now is they've got these free UI kits by professional designers that you can download and use them for your own projects. So for example, they've got a smartwatch UI kit, they've got um, a travel app, they've got all sorts of things. I actually decided to download this Navigo transportation UI kit which had a lot of cool features, and I felt like this could work well for me to customize and make my own website for all of the tutorial videos that we've done so far. So let me show you how this looks when you download it. We're gonna launch XD, and we're gonna just bring in this Navigo UI kit so you can see all the components at a glance. Great, you can tell it's pretty vast in terms of what sort of assets it comes with. So you can tell this is a lot of app. And what I want to use this for is actually a pretty simple mobile website. So what I'm going to do is pare this down to just the pages that I think I want to use. And I've got those right here. This is the really way reduced project file that I'm going to be working with. I just want to have a home page that says Photoshop gal. I want to have a categories page that's got my episodes all listed, sort of like a table of contents. I want to have a guide for each episode so that when you click into that episode, it gives you a little bit more in-depth detail about what you're going to be learning. And then I want two different options for launching that video, so we'll get into that later. First, to get my pages kind of set up, I've pulled screenshots of those navigational backdrops into Photoshop. And these are gonna be my references for where I'm gonna place some stuff. And then I've created artboards, which if you don't know how to do that, it's pretty simple. To create artboards, when you go to create a new document, you'll see that there's this little checkbox over here now in CC 2018 that lets you choose whether you're creating artboards or not. So I've got five separate artboards. They're all arranged over here in my layer panel. In fact, let's drag that over for easier visibility. And this is my reference image and I'll just build my design around that. So we'll probably speed through this part a little bit, but this will give you an idea of how you brainstorm through mocking up the assets that you're gonna use in XD to code for your mobile app or your website. All right, first I've got my buttons separated out. I know I wanna create a cool background. And then rather than this text at top, I think I wanna bring in a logo. There we go. That'll look super cool, really eye-catching when someone lands on the page. And then working on my menu page, again, this is my reference. I know I'm gonna want this to act as kind of a table of contents. So I've got my screen elements isolated. I'm gonna bring in kind of a background that matches that same feeling. And then I've got all of these thumbnails from previous episodes that I've directed. I'm gonna save these out individually as PNGs to bring into XD, but we'll also know that there's going to be some text overlaid on top of this. If we look at the reference, I'm planning to put some text to describe what you're seeing so that it's not just relying on visuals. But when I'm laying this out in the design phase, I know that I just need clean assets because I'll do the text in XD. All right, moving on to the episode page here. Again, my reference, I want sort of a big square image that shows what episode I'm about to watch over a background that goes with our theme. So we'll just mock this up really plain and simple. You'll see I added a color overlay to darken this because I already know I'm gonna wanna put a play button on there. That's just one of those nice user interface things that lets the person who's viewing your website know exactly what they can do and what the interactive elements are. And then this is where our screen elements will be roughly. What's great is you can design this stuff in Photoshop and then when you're in XD, move stuff around, adjust your design as needed, and do a lot of that in the early phase before you're even trying to get client approval or any sort of advanced features loaded, and that'll really probably speed up your process, kids. All right, into the viewer, once the user clicks on this video, I envision them landing on a cool dark background like they're in the theater space of this app 
or this website. And now the video goes full screen, um, but I'll have a version where if the, if the user is viewing vertically, it'll be just a somewhat cropped horizontal view of the video. And on our next page, if they tilt their phone, I'm envisioning that the video will go more full screen um, with a little bit of padding on either end because you may have noticed this is uh, an iPhone 10 aspect ratio I'm working with here with this design. So I've got a little bit more padding even though my video here is fully 1920 by 1080. I'm leaving a little bit of side padding with some cool design elements. So now I've got this design mocked up. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm sure I'll change some things along the way, but what I wanna do next is just save out my elements so that I can bring them into XD. Starting with our homepage, I'm gonna just go ahead and turn off some of my layers at first, all those buttons. I wanna just save this background out plain, so I make sure that I have this artboard, my home artboard selected. I'm gonna to go to File, Export, Artboards to Files, and this lets you choose where you wanna save those files to. I've been using a nice little folder with assets, and then with that location selected, I'll name something based on what page it's going on and what function it serves. So this would be page one, the home page, and it's the background. Simple as that. Then you choose whether it's going to be a simple JPEG or if you want some transparency behind it, a PNG with um, no background included. And that's how, for example, you'll save out these little thumbnails. Um, but basically saving out all your elements in the layers that you want or what's really cool about XD is you could just save out your flat JPEG with your reference buttons turned off and you can actually create fake buttons in XD that you can link and prototype with. But we'll get into that later. I'm just letting you know it's possible if you don't want to break out all of these elements individually. All right, now I'm just going to show you really quickly how to save out one of these uh, thumbnails. How about this one off of our ep episode page? I'll just turn off all the other layers on that page. And now even though artboards automatically default to showing white, I know that I have no background behind this image. It's just the cat in space. So when I go to export this as a PNG, artboards to files, save it as a PNG 24, which is high quality for web, and then don't include the background, save it as, this is our third page and we're going to call it cat image and when you hit run it's going to save that as a PNG with no background and it'll give you that nice little alert that your save was successful. All right so that covers the basics of how you kind of mock up based on a template. You can also mock things up to your heart's delight without a template, but I think the template's kind of a handy way if you're a beginner at XD to get started and use someone else's amazing talents <laughs> to learn something. All right, now back in XD, I'm gonna launch this cleaned up version of our XD project. So now you can see I'm back here with all these pages that I think I wanna build out. How do we do that? Well. Let's navigate to our assets folder and let's check out all these cool assets that we've made. So you can see I've separated out a bunch of the JPEGs or PNGs for these different elements that I wanna bring into my XD project folder. And we're just gonna place them one by one into this template that's been all cleaned up. So for example, if I go to my homepage first, I can look at the layers over here. Like there's our background image. Um, here are some of the, the elements that replicate a phone or whatever device you're trying to design for. So we've got some of these you know, screen elements. We've also got these buttons that are super cool. These came with the template. If you are starting from scratch, there are different kits that you can download, but you can see with these amazing free templates, and who doesn't love free? I have all sorts of super cool assets that are designed to fit within this look and that makes it really easy if I wanted to add you know a bubble or a login or any sort of cool iconography they've already given me so much to start with so that makes it super easy and fast now going into adding our background here I'm gonna pull in our background image and resize it because I built it at full 
iPhone 10 screen dimensions, which are absurdly huge, but when you're working with this template in XD, it scales it down nicely. So it's, you know, 375 by 812 instead of 3000 pixels by whatever. It's very handy that way. So scaled that down, placed it. You can tell it works very similarly to a lot of Adobe apps. You can send that object to the back. You can copy and paste it in front. And when I paste that, it makes it easy to place my second image because my second image will drop right in there and be the right size because I saved it out as a PNG at that same full artboard size. So with that placed, I'm gonna just work through these and place my objects real quick so that we can get to the fun part. All right, now I've got all this content placed. I've got the design portion of our website kind of built out how I like it. So it's time to prototype this and see how it would actually play out as a website. For that, we go to the prototype tab up here at top. And this is really cool. It lets you create all sorts of links between buttons or pages so that when the user is pressing them, it'll take them to the target that's intended and vice versa. So let's go ahead and do that for our video playlist button. Let's say that a user comes to our homepage and they're like, oh yeah, I wanna watch these videos. We'll make video playlist a button that links to the episodes guide and that way all they have to do is click there and it'll take them to this long list of episodes with these flashy thumbnails that they can check out. And now we get to set sort of the, the transition that happens. Let's try a push down function. And we can test that over here with the live preview button. So let's say I'm here, I hit video playlist. Oh, interesting. So that showed us how push down looks. I ended up not liking it as much as I thought. Let's try push up and we can preview that. Oh, awesome. I like that a lot better. I don't know why, it just feels more logical to me. All right, so once they've clicked to the episodes guide page, let's say they click on episode one because they're like, I'm all about cats in space. Well, we will link that to episode one's guide page. There we go, this is perfect. Um, let's have that transition be a swipe left. Let's preview that. Oh yeah, solid. Now, what if they hit play, then what? They've read all this, they're like, count me in, I wanna watch this. If they hit this play button, let's have that drive to the video vertical page. This is as if the user is still holding their phone in the vertical position, and let's maybe have that be a dissolve. Let me practice that transition real quick. Okay, yeah, that works. But most users, if they're watching their videos, they're gonna eventually turn their phone so that they can see the widescreen version. So I'm actually gonna link video vertical page to our video horizontal page. Um, when you go to code for this, obviously it would be slightly different because uh, you know the back end people would have to code for this video rotating. And there's also not a way, as far as I know, to preview video playing within XD, but you can put your stills in place so that the client or the director can at least see how this video would pop up. So that's what I'm mocking up right now. I want them to click from the video vertical to see how the video horizontal would look. There we go. That's how we imagine that this would play if the person's holding their phone sideways then. Great, so I feel like I've got this pretty worked up. You know, you wanna go back through and code these buttons so that they would go to the episode pages for each of the other episodes. And rather than going into all of that on this episode, I just wanted to give you guys a quick rundown of how you can use XT, how you can then prototype and preview your whole presentation from start to finish. You can also record this so you can send it to a client. This program is super powerful actually and can save you a lot of time when you're trying to get a design right with you and your client before you go to put in the hard elbow grease of actually coding it out or doing a lot of that back end work. So let's give this a spin. Great. Hey oh, Awesome. I can tell this website's going to be a pretty fantastic addition to the Photoshop gal repertoire. All right, so that's how easy it is to get in and try designing some user experience using Photoshop and Adobe XD. Hopefully you enjoyed this quick tutorial. Don't forget to download your free trial of Adobe Creative Cloud and try XD yourself. And please leave comments below and tune in next time. We'll see you then.